wrestling and entire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests. Hi, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan? Vaughn Ginn Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Racer, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio, with your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road or rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR IndyCar? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys have been learned to ride. Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. Good morning. Welcome to the Town & Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here in the house, and uh, I got to tell you... um, it is, uh, I don't know, we've got a fun one today. Uh, lots of chat, chitty chat talk. Um, finally able to catch up and uh, and do some stuff. Uh, I don't know, it seems like we've been slammed, like to the wall, pinned, uh, throttled down, and uh, we're finally able to kind of lift off the gas a bit. And I don't want to say coast, but uh, catch up on a few things. So uh, Amy Hood, uh, we're going to have her and I doing a Q&A segment um we got uh i don't know we got lots to catch up on on supercross what's been going on in my world what's been going on in her world uh we got sarah price calling in at uh some point today she just tested grc lights cars um and then uh joe duncan from terracross his segment is back talking some snow bikes and some terracross and then making his down and dirty radio show debut we got colby rodriguez with Red Bull Global Rallycross Chief Strategy Officer. He served as head of motorsports marketing for Red Bull for like 10 years. And then uh, after he spent that 10 years with Red Bull, 10 or 12 years, I don't know, we'll have to find out, he transitioned over to Red Bull Global Rallycross. Now he's the Chief Strategy Officer over there. So we're going to find out all the details on 2017 and Red Bull GRC with Colby and uh, between Sarah Price, Joe Duncan, Amy, and my Q&A segments, a packed show. We'll be back after this break on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. River and Marina Room starting at just $64.95 at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Our gaming floor is packed with the hottest new slot machines, table games, poker, and bingo. Live entertainment, fine and casual dining, boat slips, movie theater, wakeboard island, and fun for all. Book your resort stay at Blue Water Resort and Casino today. Sunday through Thursday, room rates start at just $64.95 based on availability. Book now at BlueWaterFun.com. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. Uh, sounds like she had an all-nighter trip across the country. How's everything going, Hood? Oh, I'm going great, guys. Um, with all my passport stuff that went down, I kind of told you about lost everything. Um, I got on my flight to Vegas, so you better believe that uh, I am making it to Monster Jam World Finals, but... Instead of, you know, I'm supposed to be spending two weeks in Vegas, I decided to hop in a van and drive to California. So I'm back in Cali for a couple of days and then heading back to Vegas. Nice. Rebooting, huh? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a lot to talk about. First off, got to tell you guys uh, a little bit uh, about my podcast, Project Action Podcast One. Been knocking out some epic stuff over there. Make sure and go over to iTunes. You can rate, review, subscribe. If you do and you leave a review, I will follow you back. If you leave your Twitter, Instagram, at username. But uh, thanks to everybody who has been uh, listening in. One of the highest rated uh, podcasts in the sports section on iTunes. Been knocking out some epic interviews with Pastrana Block and uh, Miss Amy Hood here sarah price jolene van butte um i don't know all kinds of different stuff rolling in there um and then also i was just on the adam carolla show last week went out to uh, hollywood yeah. got to do the show with adam carolla and uh, my friend matt d'andrea and uh, man that was a good time like i think my radio studio is pretty cool and then you go into adam carolla studio and you're like oh man I, this is how the the real hosts live like like seriously it was Good stuff. Uh, I don't know, Hood. Uh, next time I do the Corolla show, I think I'm going to do it again at some point, but I'll have to drag you over there. It was a ton of fun. Adam's a funny guy. Oh, I, yeah. I'm so funny. Yeah. You know I'm when, always down for anything. Yeah. When you do something with uh, with an actual comedian, you know what I mean, that's a host, like it's just, I don't know. We we get talking about stuff. It's kind of like you and I, like, like how the heck do we get talking about that? Like we started talking about uh, something in Europe and uh, like motorsports festivals over there, and I'm like, this is so not the direction I thought this conversation was going to head. But um, it was good stuff, anyways. I think that's trending as one of the top uh, automotive podcasts right now on iTunes. My interview with them, so uh, uh, I, I think it's more Corolla than me. That's the reason why it's up there, but it is. So we'll take it. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I don't know, Hood. We haven't caught up in a while. I rolled out Star Car. You're in the Monster Jam World Finals. Like we got all this stuff going on, and you and I haven't been able to get on the same page. But you are officially qualified in. Uh, I want to no, call it the Young no, Gun. No? No, 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 for the not the Young Gun Shootout, but what do they call it? No, it's the Double Down Showdown. But none of us know yet. We actually, none of us have been told it's going to get all released at the same time, and they're just slowly now releasing the Monster Jam World final competitors, not the young guns. So we still got a little bit of time, so obviously the first person to know is going to be you. So we just have to wait a little bit longer. Well, that's... It's crazy to do push it for, like, the very end. So they fly you out to Vegas, but you don't even know if you're in the show yet. Nope, not yet. Come on, Feld, man. You guys are about the biggest tease I've ever heard. This is craziness. Uh, we need to get somebody from Feld on this show. I need to chat with him, tell him, you can at least whisper in Amy's ear and let her know one way or another, man. Come on, Feld. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, that's the way they do it. And it's very, like, you know, kind of secretive. We just wrapped up championships. So, and I know things, like, change quite 
quite easily and quite often. So yeah, how gotta give it some time. I'm yeah. okay with it. I mean, I'm still going. I, I do have a good feeling about it. So let's just finger cross. Yeah. So how did you? I know there was a point where you were right in there for the championship, and then you got hurt. You missed like a round, um, and it kind of kind of took a little bit of wind out of your sails. How did you finally end up though? So with a whole missed show, so he had to sit out a show, and that's a lot of points. That could be up to like 500 points missed out in a night. And I finished one place, one point, one point, one point. How much of the tease is that? One point behind third place for the overall. And, you know, I'm really happy with that. I kind of ended off my season with a high. I won one night. I won three events, freestyle, donuts. And ATVs, um, and honestly, to, to be honest, Jim, like, Zombie and I won the crowd. And there's nothing more than I kind of, you know, wanted to do is to really just make a mark for myself and, you know, not just have the truck speak for itself, but have myself and have people come to want to watch me and, you know, me as an athlete and an entertainer and performer. And I really think I accomplished that goal. And, man, we killed it. We killed it on our last show. Like, the zombie arms are going crazy. The fans were, like, absolutely wild and I had such good response like in the autograph lines and from you know emails from parents after and it was just that's really what I came to do and I did it and I'm very very stoked yeah well and you know if the you know if there you know the those points that were out there that you didn't you know get a chance to get you probably you know you would have finished with a solid podium so uh on the season that's definitely for your first year in monster trucks and a girl who'd never driven a monster truck until six months ago that's pretty uh pretty solid effort yeah, no, I'm I'm stoked with it. Like I'm, you know, it's kind of bittersweet. It seemed like it went by so fast. Like I blinked and boom, it's it's over. But you know, I got three more shows after Vegas. Vegas is a long time, and then you know, and then it's you know endless. Like who knows where it's going to take me? And I'm excited to to find out. Yeah. So when uh, when after this is your next? Uh, when is your next? I mean, obviously there's World Finals, and then are you guys completely off until like next January? Or is there like fall shows or like summer shows or anything? We have uh, some fall stuff. Like we have, uh, I have three more shows after Vegas in April, and then um, and then then we wait for kind of like a summer fall type of schedule. So yeah. That's, I have three more that I know for sure. Okay. Nice. So it's not like you're going to be sitting on your thumbs for another six or eight months waiting to get back no, in. No, no. But it, but also, like, I'm excited to get back on a dirt bike. Like, I'm I'm excited to ride. I'm excited to, like, you know, get back in my moto groove for the summer, too. So Yeah, you've been on the road for a solid three months. Like, you literally haven't had a chance to breathe. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, this touring life is pretty, uh, I mean, it's pretty legit. Oh, I love it, though. I mean, I would never trade this for anything. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you haven't been home or... So I'm like, yes, so, like, how many opportunities do you get the chance to go on tour and live it up and YOLO it up, I like to say. So, you know, I, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I take it in every day, yeah. and I love it. So I maybe, could be back home working a desk job, but yeah. I'm driving monster trucks. Maybe <laughs> just a little a little less YOLO, and maybe you'd have, like, a wallet and a passport hood. Just just putting it out there, maybe, like, just, oh, just a hair less YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even the one who lost it. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, ha, 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 you made it funny. Are you Adam Carolla really rubbed off on you. <laughs> I just got to give you crap when I can. Oh man. So uh no, I yeah, it's got to be exciting for you to get back on a dirt bike. I know like me, like I'm out of a truck or a razor for a while and it's like I start Jones in it. I know like this whole Monster Jam thing obviously you know, but it's still like, I mean, you know, there's something about dirt bikes that's in your blood. And like for you, like to be off of one for this long, like it's, there's got to be some, there's got to be that itch. You know what I mean? You're like, I just need to get on my bike. Oh, heck yes. Are you kidding me? Like it's been, like, I can't believe I've gone as long as I have, but um, um, I have to go back to Canada before I can even ride a dirt bike. Like I'm in California right now. I have the perfect opportunity to a couple of days off to go ride, but I can't because I need to go home and breed reboot my insurance because your american laws are all crazy so <laughs> yeah well your dad's got to be jones and ride with you too i'm sure well so get this guy my dad who for those who don't know he's 61 years old it's an early dude so he goes and breaks his hand ice racing like breaks it really oh, good almost had to go get surgery but rolling went down and he opted out didn't want it so um and then goes to the like we have that big ice race back home in Canada on the Canadian Ice Racing Championship. 
And the guy goes and wins pro class five out of six races with a broken hand against, like, 20-year-old kids, and he's 61 years old. Your dad is gnarly. Uh, Isn't that crazy? Is it, like, that literally makes me have to suck up any type of injury or whining or complaining or anything that I may have because, like, this dude has a broken hand and still going out. And I think this is where I get my YOLOing from, Jim, because <laughs> Kim definitely lived the YOLO. You only live once. Like, you know, he doesn't let anything get in the way of riding his dirt bike, and it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, your dad is gnarly. He's, uh, I he can't, I know, I know I got an open invite to go up there and go ice race with him, and I can't wait to take him up on his offer. I just need the next winter, I need to get up there and make it happen because I think it'd be freaking rad. Um, yeah, for sure. But, uh, we got to take a short break. We come back, Amy and I, we got some more stuff to talk about, a little bit of supercross, and a whole lot more here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, and uh, got to say, um, back to Star Car for just a second. Um, the video from the Mint, first off, thanks to all of you who tuned in to uh, our launch video. It was like 20 seconds of me just literally shredding a razor around uh, Lake Elsinore up in Sarah Price's backyard with her and James Hill. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I took the cat out of the bag there where we filmed because we've had a bunch of people asking me where I filmed it. But uh, that was done in Lake Elsinore. Uh, but thanks to all you. Over 100,000 views. I think we're at like 111 or 112,000 views to that. And just like that happened in like 10 days. So thanks to all you who tuned into that. Um, the first episode of Star Car, I don't know what we're calling this series, but with me, Jolene, and Tanner um, from the Mint 400, it followed cameras around with us all weekend and documented the weekend and uh, has some racing stuff. Um, that is um, that is going to drop, I think, this week. It was supposed to be today, but uh, we had a little bit of a delay, so maybe tomorrow. But it will be dropping this week, so watch my social channels. Listen to Project Action. Watch Jolene, Tanner's, Polaris's. It will drop, though, but we've, uh, yeah, Star Car is, uh, the next video is coming, I promise, and it'll be a good one. This one's going to be, like, uh, quite a bit longer. It's going to document kind of the whole weekend, so um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. How was your weekend, Hood? Obviously, driving across country. I'm um, sitting here chatting about I Star Car. What's that? Well, you flew, but you now you drew, uh, I guess, drove from Vegas to uh, to L.A., right? Um, uh, no, San Diego. San Diego. I like San Diego, L.A. I hate. No offense to anybody living in L.A., but uh, I don't know. San Diego, she's got I a better vibe for me. Diego, How do you not know this by now? Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I like San Diego a bit better than L.A. I like the beaches a lot better, too. Beaches are so much better oh, yeah. in San Diego. But, uh, um, yeah, no, my weekend was good, but I mean, did we get a chance to actually watch Daytona Supercross? Because it was probably the most insane race I have seen in a long, long time. Like, wait, and didn't we not talk about this? That literally Daytona was going to jump, hit, flip all the boats over, and you know the whales were going to come from the sea. Like it was one of those things that any, like I knew that it was going to be a complete change up of, you know, podiums and points. And it was just going to be wild. And it absolutely was. I mean, we had Jeremy Martin jump from 250 to 450 lead half of the race in 450 class. Jeremy Martin, who couldn't even really, I mean, he didn't really do anything in 250s this year either. And then we had our homie who, you know, we've silently been rooting for, for so long now, finally, like, pull himself together and make it to the top of the podium. Adam Cincerello, great baby Jesus. I'm so happy for him. <laughs> it's got to be – It's if you're Adam, it's got to feel really darn good about now. Here's a guy who, what was it, two, three years ago, he basically lost the championship when he got injured with, like, a round to go. I mean, he had it in the bag. And, uh, I mean, that had to have been just crushing to him. And then ever since then, it's like everybody's going, oh, Adam, he's he's lost his step. He's not the same Adam and this and that. And, like, it's got to feel really good if you're Adam right now coming off a win saying, look, man, I'm still here. I still got it. Yeah, for sure. And, like, I mean, I even I kind of felt like he wasn't the same Adam and made him, might have called him out on this radio show before. But, uh, I, I mean, I knew that he always had it in him. I just think, like, he was young and he needed a little bit of, like, growing up to do. Like, not me- always, not just mentally, but – his body too. I mean, his he couldn't really handle a hit. You know, he needed to bulk up and beef up, and you know, I don't know. I just think he struggled with how maybe fast that he was and talented that he was, and maybe the shape that he was in. I don't. I'm not sure. I know obviously all the athletes are in impeccable shape, but I just think he needed to kind of go back to the drawing board and you know start over again, if you will, and you know take it back to square one and and learn something new and figure it out because clearly he was missing something for, you know, where he started to, you know, how he was doing. But I guess whatever he's doing and whatever homework that he's been doing is uh, paid off because he had ended up on the top of the podium and I absolutely know that's not going to be the last time we see him there now. Yeah. Well, here's a question. Do you, because obviously Adam was super young. Now he's got, like you said, he's older. He's got a little bit more bulk to him. I think now we're seeing an Adam that's going to go and start winning championship after championship. Uh, yeah. um, so do you do you think, like I look at a kid like Forkner, right? Super young, small guy. Obviously he's got talent to spare, but I can draw a lot of parallels between Forkner and like seeing Cerullo from like two, three years ago. You know what I mean? Like I think Forkner's a year or two away from really being a good Supercross rider. I do too, but I do think Forkner is on a different level than Adam. Because Adam was kind of this kid that grew up in the spotlight, okay? Okay. Um, super goofy, funny dude. Did he take everything as seriously as he could have? I absolutely don't think so. 
Austin Forster, on the other hand, is like the Ryan Villapoto, you know, coming of age story where it is just championship, championship. That is like his narrow mind focus. And the kid is very, you know, a little bit laid back and, and quieter. And I think that their demeanors are very different. And I think kind of, <laughs> and I think that kind of sets the pace for maybe their serious level <laughs> of it. I mean, I know that's kind of, you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, like, no, I Adam, get it. Yeah, Adam really enjoyed the spotlight. I and mean, there's no problem with that. Like, there's no problem with loving, you know, every aspect of your career and everything that comes with it and, you know, being a good personality and great on camera and goofy and funny. But, you know, sometimes to win championships with how stacked those fields are, you know, you got to really pull all that away and push that aside and, and, and until you're – you know, your maturity level is there. You know, like Ken Roxton can joke around all he wants because, I mean, the, you know, he's winning, right? yeah. you know. But um, I just think that Austin's mentality is on a very different level than Adam Cincerello at that age. So yeah. that's my personal take on it if I'm looking from the outside. But I could be completely wrong. Yeah. I mean, one could eat Wheaties and one couldn't. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we we got to circle back. We got to we got to talk uh a bit about uh 450s. I mean, we've been talking 250s, but lots of big news. I mean, obviously you mentioned Jeremy Martin taking uh taking second That's place. Crazy. Um That's to me- crazy. I, I I honestly think that comes from, you know, owning Millville, having that impeccable track in your backyard. And he he's a, he is an outstanding outdoor rider. And we all kind of knew that. I mean, he's outdoor champion two years in a row. And um, I think the kid struggles with Supercross. And then you throw an outdoor-style track, and you see who is going to slay it in the summer. And I love it because, it, again, it shakes things up. It's a good foreshadowing for what we're going to expect for uh, outdoor series. Um, you know, Jason Anderson, very successful. Ryan Dungey, nah. I like it. I like that he, you know, wasn't running at the front of the pack. And it, it just it shakes it up. It makes it so that, you know, people's fantasy supercrosses will change up a little bit more. Yeah. I don't know. I just like seeing. I like seeing something different, and I really like the foreshadowing of outdoors. I really like to see. It's really interesting, actually, to see though. Like you know, Jeremy struggled with supercross, and on a two fifty, and I mean, he's a small dude. He's smaller than I am, like height wise, and you think that he would struggle on a four fifty, but clearly that's not the case. So it was really interesting to me to see how successful he was on the 450. And, you know, has he been riding one for a long time? Or uh, I heard he just jumped on one. So it's it's going to definitely make it for an interesting year. Now, now is he going to jump up to 450s for outdoors? I don't know. I mean, if, by the looks of it, it looks like he could definitely hold his own. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, I mean, I'm just looking at these point standings here, too. I mean, uh, obviously, Dungey still got the lead, but uh, I think everybody thought after Roxon's injury he was going to check out, and, boy, have we learned that wasn't the case, man. Tomac um, is giving him a hell of a run for his money this year. Yeah, and I voted for Dungey for my fantasy Supercross League on the weekend, and I lost $20. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan Dungey. You uh-huh. owe me, all right, because – I mean, I thought I thought Dungey was a good outdoor rider. Like I thought that's where his niche was. And I mean, dang, like Tomac's on it. And he I is you know, on you it. give Tomac a little bit of confidence and he's gonna take the whole thing. Like he's I just thought that maybe Ryan would be more of a safe bet because I know that Tomac is a little bit more inconsistent. But now we're seeing inconsistent Ryan, you know, bad start, um, you know, battling having to work his way through the pack. And, you know, not kind of whole shotting and checking out like we're used to seeing. And that's why he was always a safe bet. But, you know, it's very it's very different now. Yeah. Well, and how good was it, uh, I know, to finally see Roxon at a Supercross event? Ten surgeries yeah. now. Crazy. I know. That's it's cool. insane. He was supposed to lose his arm. Like, yeah. it's incredible. And I really hope, you know, the recovery process goes good for him. And I hope that. When he gets back on the bike, he'll be the same Roxanne that we know and love. And I'm just, you know, I'm just wishing all the best and positive vibes for him for sure. Like, I just, we need him. The sport needs him. Everything. It's just. He hadn't even hit his prime yet either. Yeah, he hadn't even hit his prime yet. He's, uh, 
Uh, I think this was his breakout year, and like even like I listened to uh, the conversation that uh, that he had with uh, Ralph Shaheen, and uh, like you can tell he's like he wants to come back, he wants to win titles. Like he hasn't lost his drive. He I guess his past yesterday he had a uh, he had another surgery to pull off like the apparatus off his arm finally, and he wasn't even going under. He they were having him give him he was basically getting a local in his arm because he's like I'm tired of going under. He's like I'll just gut through the pain. Just give me a local, and that way I can fly home as soon as the surgery's done and like i'm like mm-hmm. this guy like wow like um you know but he's driven he's just like i'm over going under he's like i need to get ready it's to, you know i got titles to win so he's like he's he's already thinking about coming back and winning you know i know i love it so it's definitely uh definitely gonna be a fun story to watch i don't know if we'll see him back this year i think we'll probably see him on the gate at a1 in 2018 which you know is probably a safe bet but yeah um you it's know too bad how long of a recovery process that is and but I mean, for how scary the situation was, it's uh, uh, he's making a great recovery. Like he's one healthy dude and positive vibes, and it's uh, it's so scary. It's crazy. I mean, I just I hate to see that happen to anybody. And never mind, you know, our, the king of our sport. Everyone loves Ken Rockson. So yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break, and uh, when we come back, we've got a couple of interviews, and then Amy and i got some fan questions coming at you in hour number two. All that and more here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights.
Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, joined on the line by my good friend Sarah Price. How's everything going, Sarah? Hey, guys. Going great. Just, uh, you know, another day in sunny California and working on getting in some race cars. Yeah, you've uh, you've been bouncing around a bit. First off, I got to thank you and uh, and James because the Star Car program wouldn't have launched without you two and the all nighters and all the help and support and everything else. So first off, thank you guys for that. Uh, before I uh, before we get into talking about all these race cars you've been driving, uh, <laughs> you're welcome. It was a blast. You guys killed it up a bit, and uh, I can't wait to see what's to come from that car and from you guys. And it's going to be a great year. I just feel it. Yeah, it's going to be uh, going to be a ton of fun. I know uh, we learned a lot from the first one, and uh, you know James built a hell of a car that could pretty much finish the mint with zero test miles on it, you know, or a, only a handful. I mean, that's a, saying a lot about the car he built. But uh, um, talking about you, um, I know uh, you were telling me, um, you know, I think I was out at the mint. You were getting ready to test uh, GRC Lights cars, and I was pumped for you because I, I think it was like two or three years ago I actually tested GRC Lights cars, and it was different than anything I'd ever driven before. But I was pumped to get you on air to talk about it because, you know, you've driven razors. You've done a little bit of road racing, um, you know, obviously stadium super trucks. So, I mean, how was that? I mean, how how did that compare to anything else you've done? Oh, man. Um, well, it was it was something completely new for me. I, uh, I never driven a car like that exactly, but – they are a blast. Those machines are are just such a good time to drive. You know, they, they don't have much bottom end, but they have top end, so you really have to be on it. It's kind of like, it reminded me as like a, a dirt bike, a two-stroke, where you have to just be on the pipe all the time. So like, at first I was short shifting it, and they're kind of like, you can just rev it out to the rev limiter, and just once you hit the rev limiter is when you shift, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And once I got that down, I, I just started picking up time and I uh, got really comfortable really fast. I was uh, I think I just was having such a good time that I just took to it really fast. So it was a blast, and I tested with Twitch, and uh, he kind of felt the same way. It was kind of like a two-stroke dirt bike. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I know, like me, the, the biggest thing that caught me about him um, – they accelerate, you know, and you can wind them up. And when you think you've wound them too much, like it'll still, it, it'll still go more. Um, but the biggest thing for me was the braking. Like those things, you can break so deep into corners, and that was like getting my brake points right was what took me. It took me some laps because I'd brake and they'd be like drive harder into the corner. I'm like, no way. There's no way this thing could stop. And he's like, drive harder into the corner. And then I drive harder, and I'm like, holy crap! So it's like when you think you're gonna brake for me, it was like, all right, wait another second, and then push the pedal. Yeah, exactly. We were doing the same thing. And those brakes were so good on those cars. I was uh, actually really, really impressed by that. And uh, we did Willow Springs, so we did the streets of Willow backwards. So you come down that big old straightaway. Okay. And you're going probably, I never really looked at the miles per hour, but I'm thinking from what um, AS had said, it was about 100, 105. And then you're coming straight into a hairpin because we used part of the go-kart track. So we had a super tight section after a fast section. And it's the same thing. They're like, hey, push your braking point. Push it in. They're like, you need to be on the brakes before you turn because that's what pivots the car because they're all-wheel drive and yeah. they're lined up. And, uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. I pushed it really hard one time and kind of, like, got a little loose and, and almost spun out completely around. But it was good to kind of learn that that point, you know. Yeah, I I spun it out once too. I remember it was like like there's a point where you're trying to find the limits of the car and like I'd driven trophy trucks and everything else, but it's just a, it's a tough car to figure out. So it's like you know, and I was lucky that there you know where we were testing in Lake Elsinore, uh, there was actually a lot of runoff room. They built basically a a, a rally cross track in a parking lot of uh, of the baseball stadium there. Um, they brought in dirt. Oh, and then, yeah. yeah, they brought in dirt, and then they had tarmac and everything else. But there was a ton of runout room, so it was no consequences, you know. But I, I spun the car out once, and, I mean, it was kind of funny. But um, but I feel like you almost have to at least once, you know, so you can find the limit of the car, you know. Exactly. And, uh, and also, like, you know, it's really cool because they have all that data stored. So we, uh, we tested with AF Racing Team, and so uh, – their top racer got in the car first and we could compare like okay this is where you're slower or this is where he's faster and 
and this is you don't have to be in this gear all the way till this point and it was really cool to see the data because that helped a lot when I went back out the second time to kind of be like oh okay cool so this is how the car works when he drives it and he's obviously a competitor and has won rounds before so it was really cool to kind of go off of that and have a little bit of a a, a something to judge off of because uh, sometimes when you're out there by yourself you don't really know what what good or faster or what's not you know <laughs> yeah how were your times compared to was it alejo that you were were there with or yeah alejo went out there first and we had two cars out there we had one that was they were also testing with alejo so um they had one car that they had a different setting on that was like a softer suspension i believe mm -hmm. and the car was about they said a good half a second a second slower and then there was the other car out there that he had been racing in. I believe it was the old setting that was a little bit faster because of it. But, um, yeah, he went out in both cars. He showed me in Twitch kind of how you do it, just, you know, to show and get some time on the cars. And then me and Twitch hopped in. And I, uh, I was in the slower car because I was too short, so they made that <laughs> car kind of fit me. And then Twitch got the car that was ready to go. So, um yeah, but our lap times were really close. We were all within a second of each other. Nice. Nice. That's so awesome. It was it was pretty pretty cool to see and uh it was uh it was really really good team, honestly. It was a great team and Brad Alejo, he helped us so much. Yeah. So what uh what um I, I wanna ask you about the gearbox because I know uh like Obviously, with all the razors and stuff you race, there's no gearbox. Um, then you go and you do SST, and and they've got a different type gearbox. And then you go in, and now it's a full sequential gearbox in the, uh, um, you know, in the lights cars. How the gearbox? How was it? You adjusting to the sequential box? Oh man, I loved it because uh, coming from the street car, you know, it's a regular eighth pattern six speed, and that that gets kind of you know. It, it's you're you're having to think about it a little bit more but in that car it's just like once again like the motocross like yeah. you're shifting up you're shifting down and it's just you don't really have to think too much about it because you don't have to clutch at the same time yeah and i thought it was i i absolutely loved it because you can then throw it in and in the mid corner it's just super easy just to click a gear and get, get some speed you know in case like especially if you make a mistake it's just easy to recover from it but, of course, in those cars, momentum's everything. And if you make a mistake, it's going to cost you a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the racing's so tight, um, you know, in, in GRC with those things. It's like, I don't know, some of the best racing, I'd say, in motorsports is coming out of the lights division in GRC. Everybody's – it's because all the cars are the same, and it just goes down to setup, you know. But they're so close. It's so awesome. Lots of passing and, you know, banging fenders and uh, good stuff. So, uh, so what's up next for you? Obviously, you had this test. I mean, was there – I know when I tested, there was no real, it was like they were just trying to get people to get a feel for things, see if you like the series, um, you know, and I, I just couldn't get the funding to go racing full time. I mean, my times were good enough, but it was just, it was just kind of one of those things. But I mean, with you, I mean, you were actually testing with a team. I mean, what's, what's the next step Were they just kind of letting you feel the car out and see if it's something you want to pursue? I mean, what's, uh, what's going on? Yeah, they, uh, they pretty much had me out and, and just see how I did. They didn't know if I would go out there and just completely suck or not, but <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I impressed them, and, and they uh, really liked me as a driver, so that was really good, and hopefully, you know, we get some interest in sponsorship, and we can get the year funded, but yeah, it's pretty much to get my feet wet, and then kind of go from there on, on trying to get sponsors and, and see what comes about of it, and you know, it's a little bit late in the season, because uh, the season starts next month, but... You never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and here's a question. I mean, is it something, because I know like SST, like you're going to do Long Beach, and uh, you're just going to kind of have a like a handful of rounds kind of mix and match. You know what I mean? Is, is there an opportunity there with lights where you step in for like three or four rounds or something like that? You know, maybe it's not a full season deal, but it's just, you know, a handful of rounds for your number one? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that yesterday, and I haven't asked them that yet. But I know if that car isn't going to be um, leased by anyone, that I'm sure that it will be available to do so. So I'm going to actually call them today and, and kind of pick their brain on that because I'd love to be there at the first round and just kind of get my feet wet and see how I do and, 
and just start working and training in the meantime until I do get a fully funded program. Yeah, we got we got to get you up to Dirtfish so quick because they've actually got light. Uh, uh, they're the only place in the country with a lights car that you can actually go and um, basically rent if you've got the qualifications. You know what I mean, and, and just burn laps in a lights car. And uh, oh wow, yeah, they've actually because they've got their team and they field two cars in the lights division. Um, you know, actually against AF Racing, but um, I think at one point in time, there's something like 90% of the lights field has been up to Dirtfish because they've got a car there that's prepped just for training for lights, so you can go in and just literally burn lap after lap in a lights car. Oh, that would be so worth it. I would. Uh, I I really need to get to the Dirtfish place. Yeah. Like you talk about it all the time, and it just sounds like such a blast. I need to get up there. Yeah, I know. We we talked about it, you and I, and I'm like, crap. Like we just. I I need to put you after we get off air. I need to just put you in touch with those people, and that way you can get things dialed in and and figured out. Because <laughs> yeah, especially if you're even thinking about going lights racing this year. Like I think we need to get you up there, and especially just with like the all wheel drive and learning. Like with me, I mean, razors are all-wheel drive, but, you know, rally cars are all-wheel drive, but it's a bit different, you know what I mean? It's just, like, you can learn so much with the braking and things like that, you know what I mean, and how to steer the car with the brakes. And, like, I know with Dirtfish, it's just the small things like that, you know what I mean, that I've been able to pick up that really improve my time and, you know, and things that are all-wheel drive. And, you know, and it's like the only way you can learn that is seat time, you know what I mean? It's like just being thrown into a test for a day. Like, you can't really work on the small things, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I, I yeah. know I always pick up a lot up there, so. Yeah, no, those are, that would have definitely help. Any any seat time is good seat time. Like like I said, you know, like all the different disciplines I've raced, it's just, you know, anything I can race and get in and drive and ride, is I'm all for it. And, uh, yeah, I have a, I have actually a lot of interest in this, this first test, so. I have, uh, it's all out in the atmosphere, and so I'm just waiting on a few responses, and I, I don't know, for some reason, I have a good feeling that I'm going to have a lot of support, and it's going to be a good year, and hopefully be in a light star, so I, I'm feeling good about it. Nice, and uh, I know, uh, what's up next for you, obviously, this past weekend, I think you were spotting for Ellis, right? How was that? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> well, James, you know, because he's on crutches, and he couldn't do too much, so he had me out there kind of helping everything, and. Yeah, I spotted for Ellis. He was out there in the new Can Am, and he uh, he did awesome. He drove incredible, but he uh, got crashed into and had a had a break. And then the first race, we haven't relocated the radiator yet, so he overheated a little bit from the mud packing in the front of the radiator. So the next race, he put a screen on, and and yeah. But other than that, it was really cool to see him actually put down some really good times and. He honestly could have won. Yeah. Well, you know, this is the thing with Ellis. Like, and he laughs on his radio show and, like, you know what I mean? Oh, I wreck things and this and that. And I'm like, like, you know, like, as a driver level, I look at him and he's not the same guy he was four or five years ago. Like, he's turned into a really good race car driver. And I don't think people give him the credit he deserves because I think they know him from crashes four or five years ago and things like that. Like, he really has put in the time and he's become a really good race car driver. Yeah, honestly, he he is one of the best when you go to a Lucas Oil Regional race. So I can vouch for him on that aspect that, you know, I agree. A lot of people want to call him yard sale. And I almost like the other day, someone got on his Instagram. He had posted about his race, and it was how he broke. Like, the picture was of his car broken. And everyone kept getting on there and posting, like, yard sale, yard sale, yard sale. And I was like, he didn't crash. He got crashed into, and that's part of racing. I was like, you know, I just let it be. But I kind of, yeah, sometimes I feel kind of bad because people, you know, they, they judge him because of what they just see and hear. And, you know, they think the car is broken. Well, that's his fault. And partially it is, but partially it's not, too, because yeah. I was just racing side by side. Yeah, exactly. All right, Sarah, well, I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we definitely need to do it more often, my friend. Yeah, it was good talking with you guys. All right, you too. Thanks a lot, Sarah. We'll chat soon. All right, bye you guys. All right, thanks. All right, that was Sarah Price coming off uh, a GRC Lights test this past weekend. We're going to take a short break. We come back. We got, uh, I don't know, hour number two, Joe Duncan. We got Colby Rodriguez from Red Bull GRC. A whole lot more on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. 
When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Casino is doing it again. $32,200 in cash will be given away in March with their lucky Clover Cash giveaway. Thank my lucky stars. With nine chances to spin the wheel on Saturdays every half hour from 2 till 6 p.m. Arizona time. And we're back on Friday, March 31st, when one person will win $20,000 at 7 p.m. Lucky Clover Cash giveaway. See the club for details. New Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. River and Marina Room starting at just $64.95 at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Our gaming floor is packed with the hottest new slot machines, table games, poker, and bingo. Live entertainment, fine and casual dining, boat slips, movie theater, wakeboard island, and fun for all. Book your resort stay at Blue Water Resort and Casino today. Sunday through Thursday, room rates start at just $64.95 based on availability. Book now at BlueWaterFun.com. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Oh, man, just wrapping up hour number one, and uh, what a heck of an hour number one. Talking to Supercross, catching up with Amy Hood, Sarah Price coming off a GRC lights test, and uh, sounds like she killed it. Uh, was there ever any doubt Miss Sarah Price wouldn't kill it in a GRC lights test? Um, I don't know. I've been friends with Sarah for, I don't know, four or five years now, and uh, she's become a really good friend. And uh, I just got to say, man, uh, this girl, I, I don't know if I've ever met somebody so talented behind the wheel or handlebars of just about anything. Like, seriously, um, girl just, she shreds. She she has a view of the track and the terrain, whether it be off-road or, or road racing. It's just, it's just crazy. Just a sickly talented, um, individual. So, uh, uh, super pumped to catch up with her. Um, and also speaking of catching up, I actually did an awesome interview, like an hour and a half long with her on project action some months ago. That I think you can get, um, I don't know if it's under the premium subscription now or not with uh, podcast one, but uh, go over to podcast one, you can check it out or iTunes, uh, as well as all my latest just, uh, came off, uh, did an awesome, actually mint 400. She was my co-host at the mint 400 along with Jim Riley. Um, we had that big two hour episode that's on project action. Uh, Jolene Van View done some stuff with the NCIS actor, pro BMX writer, Kurt Yeager, Nate Wessel, Colton Haker. Uh, so a ton of great content and interviews 
um, you know, sitting there right now at, uh, you know, at Project Action. So if you love this show, you're going to love Project Action, my spinoff show. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes and uh, get all the latest over there. Um, always good stuff. Thanks to all you guys who have. And, um, yeah, but uh, we're going to take a short break. And uh, when we come back, we've got a uh, little bit of a Dirtfish Rally Report coming at you here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris Rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. This is your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. And uh, yeah, well, just talking about Dirtfish with Sarah Price and how it can benefit her, it benefits me, it can benefit you, anybody, doesn't matter if you race, you don't race, it's a good time. They teach you a lot of car control that uh, is good, not only in racing conditions, but uh, regular driving conditions as well. So um, definitely go check it out. If you need a discount code, use the code JBDirtfish at dirtfish.com and it'll give you a 15% off. That is 15% off when you're talking a few thousand dollar class for a three day or some advanced training. That is a lot of money. So uh, thank me later. Have some fun up there at Dirtfish. But uh, rally action, um, big one, World Rally Championship Mexico. This is the closest event to the United States. And uh, I don't know. I think this is the one like most American off-road fans actually pay attention to. Um, because it's in Mexico and uh, close, and a lot of guys that I know travel down there. Um, but uh, yeah, it was um, um, uh, it was actually a really, uh, really. It's an awesome event. Ken Block's gone down there before. I know a lot of our off road photographers travel down there. But uh, Meek walking away with the win. Um, <laughs> Sebastian uh, in second. Uh, I'm loving seeing him in an M Sport car. Not that. It, not that M Sport cars aren't good, but I think it's just a uh, it's a hair step back from what he was driving last year, so it's made it very interesting racing. Um, but uh, Newville in third, Tonic fourth, Patton, Latvala, Hannanen, and Sordo. That's your top eight. Um, I do have to uh, throw a shout out uh, down to. Um, uh, Dave Wallingford, you know him from Rally America, um, and Linnea Jania um, from Team O'Neill. Um, they are, um, yeah, they they run the Rally America series, and uh, he went down there in his uh, um, in his Fiesta and ended up taking a podium in his uh, in his division. So uh, I just got to say, man, that's awesome. Um, we got an American podium finisher down there at. Uh, um, down there at WRC Mexico. So, uh, um, I don't know. That's uh, pretty solid. We've had him on our, uh, on our Rally America radio coverage, uh, quite a bit. So I'm sure if you want an interview, you can skip back there and listen in, but, uh, give, give a big shout out to him. And then, uh, uh, he'll be racing this weekend and rallying the 100 acre wood, um, this weekend, Rally America round number two for them, uh, solid entry list. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll have full coverage of that next week as well. And that was your Dirtfish Rally report for this week brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com and we will be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. 
the same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. River and Marina Room starting at just $64.95 at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Our gaming floor is packed with the hottest new slot machines, table games, poker, and bingo. Live entertainment, fine and casual dining, boat slips, movie theater, wakeboard island, and fun for all. Book your resort stay at Blue Water Resort and Casino today. Sunday through Thursday, room rates start at just $64.95 based on availability. Book now at BlueWaterFun.com. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my next guest to the line, my good buddy Joe Duncan with Terracross. How's everything going, Joe? Things are great, Jim Beaver. How about yourself? Well, things are good. Just got done with that uh, Star Car launch, that little teeny project I've been working on for 18 months. And uh, <laughs> life is definitely good. Our first video got over a hundred thousand views i think we're at like a hundred and eleven thousand views and and uh we're getting ready to launch video number two and uh good time at the mint 400 so uh uh yeah it's kind of nice to launch a successful project and not have it flop you know <laughs> it looked awesome you guys did a great job tanner and jolene and the whole uh whole crew there it looked like a great uh great program yeah it was definitely fun and i know uh we got some some really special co-drivers jumping in at uh, the utv world championship here in about a month so uh uh that'll be fun and then uh then we get a little bit of time off before vegas Torino, and uh, i can concentrate on terracross right yeah that uh that'll be coming up before we know it we're in the process of getting all of our stuff uh dialed in we're just out at hey days uh uh, a little over a week ago, looking at some new things we're putting together out there with some VIP suites and some things we had worked on last year. So uh, pretty excited to get that that project rolling and getting that all ready to go. And the Ziegler Cat guys, the Caterpillar guys, are so pumped. We're actually uh, we're actually sending one of our Polaris Razor uh, razors over to uh, Caterpillar, and it's going to sit at their shop over there. Um, all decked out with their logos, ready to ready to go racing again this year. So pretty pretty excited to see that out on their front doorstep and uh, get some photos with all the equipment. If Miss uh, Minnesota ever quit snowing and being cold, so the guys can go to work in that cat equipment. Yeah, you guys, it's crazy. We've actually got a heat front rolling in here. We're like in the 90s here in Arizona, and Minnesota. You guys were kind of. 
I mean, it was one of those things where it was kind of drying up, and you know, it was like spring coming early, and then it's like, no, nah, let's let's hold on a minute. We're we're gonna dump a little more snow. Two to three weeks of twenty to thirty degree above normal temps, and you know, grass was pretty much ready to turn green, and then six eight inches of snow um, here in southern Minnesota. Of course, nothing up north where uh, where they still could probably ride snowmobiles if they wanted to, but. But yeah, it's uh, been some crazy, crazy weather. And I, uh, we just had a nice trip down to uh, Florida with some uh, great vacation and uh, a few meetings. And now uh, off to Texas uh, for some big uh, Terracross meetings. We're loading up the Polaris Razor Turbo and getting that ready for uh, for a show and some. Uh, and uh, meeting up with some racers and some uh, partners of ours. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know, man. It, it's one of those things that <laughs> I laugh because people, it's like, you know, with a star car project, we've been working on it for 18 months and we were still up against the gun to get it launched for the mint, like literally all nighters the week before the race. And it's like with Terracross, like you've had a year to prepare or, or since things ended, I mean, you've had some months and you're getting things lined up and things like that. And, uh, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, and, and you and I can sit here and talk and go, oh, yeah, things are good. We still got like five months before the opener or something like that. But you and I know that <laughs> things get uh, things get crazy, man. You, uh, you know, you get close. And it's like you could always use another month, you know? Yeah, things come up. Uh, things come up really, really quick, as we know. And uh, the cool thing is we have all of our turbos are at the – at the farm, uh, waiting to go over to Katu Motorsports and start to be assembled. And uh, over, I think, uh, one, one and a half classes worth of our XT1000s are already sitting there, um, already sitting there ready to go. So uh, pretty excited we're, we're putting that uh, all those uh, machines together, uh, starting to assemble some of the racers in the turbo class machines starting to assemble uh uh the xp 1000 so yeah getting a, getting a little jump on uh jump on the season here which is nice as you know normally we are getting the machines the week of and uh assembling them and then wrapping them at two or three o'clock in the morning so trying to get a little little jump on uh on the season this year so it's kind of nice yeah, well, and I uh, got uh, got some new divisions coming in this year. I know, uh, you know, we we're you're going to launch turbo division last year, delayed it by a year, but you've already got the turbos there, and uh, guys, you know, guys at the shop getting them dialed in and ready for race season, right? Yeah, we've actually got over half of them uh, pre-assembled. We've got some great Polaris accessories on their way in, um, and uh, yeah, we'll get those things wrapped up and get them ready uh get them ready for the guys to, to come out we might even do a little preseason test session and and a media media day we're talking about uh in conjunction with a couple of our big partners um coming up so it's pretty pretty cool to to be rolling a little ahead of schedule and getting things dialed in and i've had some uh, really good um meetings with some racers and some potential sponsors partners coming on board for this year and and again just uh keeping it affordable keeping it uh you know high exposure and and just keeping that that cost down to the racer and to the partner with our great cbs sports network television um you know keeping that that terracross tradition alive i think there's some photos and uh, maybe even a little video of the of the razors being loaded up on our PJ trailers, those 40 footers that we, uh, we fill up. We were just down at the Polaris warehouse and loaded them up and got them ready to, ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Well, I know, uh, um, you know, talking about drivers coming in and talking with new drivers, like it doesn't seem like regardless of whether I, where I go, whether it be something with drifting or rally or off-road desert or the UTV, like everybody, Terra Cross is on everybody's radar. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's figuring out how to budget it in and go race. But, uh, you know, it's like Terra Cross, it, it, people are aware of the series now, what it's about. And, uh, you know, and, the, and drivers, they all want to be there. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, you know, with the exposure from yourself and all the others, uh, you know, Jason Ellis and everybody that 
that's been around it, and we make it simple, make it fun, and uh, and make it affordable, and uh, and then put throw on that you know television package on top of it. Yeah. Makes it well worth it for these guys to come out and participate. Some some pretty cool um, uh, former racers from other um, open wheel and uh, NASCAR series are we're in the talks with right now. And uh, we're going to see some pretty uh, pretty cool announcements coming over over the next uh, few months, and pretty excited. And and hey, when are we going back to Dirtfish? It's all Jeremy and I can talk about <laughs> is how much fun we had at Dirtfish, and uh, and we need to go back and and drive those Subarus some more. That was a freaking riot. Yeah, I gotta I gotta organize another day because I'm chatting with Sarah Price earlier, and like her and I have been talking about it for months. She wants to go up there. Jolene Van Butte, she wants to go up there. Like, I, I think we just need to, like, book out a 10-person group and just take a bunch of us up there and go and have fun for three days, you know? I know Cole Katu and Levi LaValle want to go back. Yeah. You know, maybe we do a full-on Terracross Dirtfish uh, uh, two, three-day class up there and, and bring everybody out and uh, and have a blast. We've, we've told everybody about it, how much fun we had. And I know Jeremy's uh, looking at bringing – some of his clients out there and having a good time so uh let's do it yeah well and then there's some of those dirt fish factory drivers that race in grc you know well james river and connor connor martell he's won a couple of races maybe there's a deal where we can do something where we bring them out and let them get to experience terror crossing around you know or something like that too so i'm sure there's something we can we can figure out there buddy yeah i think uh i think the dirt fish folks um we can get them uh get them out there and uh have some fun yeah, for sure. All right, Joe. Well, we got to take a short break, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time to call in. Uh, stoked on 2017 season, and uh, you know, can't wait to uh, you know to get back in some razors and and start jumping some more. <laughs> and doing a little rolling. Thanks, yeah. Jimmy. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right. Bye. All right, that was Joe Duncan with the Terracross Championship. We're going to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We come back. Amy and I, we're answering your fan questions. If you got questions, at Jim Beaver 15 tweet me right now. You got three minutes. We'll get them in the show. We'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally.
They're cracking eggs. Get to the Blue Water Resort and Casino every Wednesday for the best breakfast special on the river. That's right. For just a dollar ninety-nine every Wednesday from seven to eleven, wake up to two farm fresh eggs, sizzling crisp bacon, country potatoes, and choice of toast for just a buck ninety-nine with your club card and purchase of a beverage. It's the dollar ninety-nine Wednesday breakfast special only at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on. All right, it's March, which means it's time for the madness. And it's crunch time in the NBA. So you know we got it all covered on the big podcast with me, Shaq. And we're way more than just sports, Shaquille. So be prepared to laugh, folks, as we bring you the best basketball coverage, the biggest names in hoops, like Kevin Garnett, Chris Paul, Dick Vitale, Grant Hill, Chris Weber, and many, many more. The big podcast with Shaq. Check us out with new episodes every Monday at podcastone.com. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. We're about 15 minutes away from uh, Colby Rodriguez with Red Bull Global Rallycross, an interview with him. But before that, Amy and I, we got some fan questions. We had a bunch of them rolling in, asked people to uh, tweet me and get dialed in here. And I don't know, I, I actually, I had a bunch of them on Project Action, Amy, and I, um, that were dedicated to that like three weeks ago. I did an entire podcast just on fan questions. Um, really? Yeah, it was kind of fun. Um, but uh, I mean, there's so many things that people want to know all the time. So. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I kind of love doing this, but uh, we got 12 minutes and we got, what, we got five questions here. So it's like, eh, two questions a minute. Okay, I don't well, know. let me throw in a question that I literally just got emailed to me right now before I... Okay, we'll start with so, yours. Um, somebody wanted to know if I'm married, and the question is no, I am not. <laughs> so a weird question to send in my email address. Come oh, on, people. The trials and Please. tribulations of Amy Hood. Uh, are you yeah. married? I... <laughs> Uh, I I don't even want to know the DMs you get. Well, you've forwarded some of them to me. Like I don't know. Like come on, people. Like it, here's the que- here's the deal with questions and DMs and anything. Like if it's not something you would ask somebody in person to their face, do not ask yeah. it via DM or email or text. I'm sorry. If you won't ask it to their face, don't do it. Yeah, no, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, like I get some bizarre stuff too, and it's like nothing at your level because uh, I'm a dude, but like I don't know. It just people bother me, you know. It's like I've had this conversation with my sponsors too. Like people will DM them, and you know, and it's like they'll they'll pitch sponsorship via direct message on a corporate in, on a corporate social media account, wanting free stuff, and they don't even know who it goes to. It's like, you know, at least ask for the right contact for the right person then send them a personal email. But it's like, I don't know, DM isn't the way – in the place to do your business. Like, it's all right to chat. Like, I've reached out to people through there. But, like, seriously, you, like, you got to have a personal touch. And you got to have a filter on DMs. Drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can say Amy is not married, though. <laughs> I know her well enough to know there's no secret husband hiding somewhere. Gosh. I'm not in one place long enough to have that. No, I'm young. Like I feel like there's so many people like my age, and I kind of made a post about this on my birthday. Like most twenty-seven. Oh my gosh, I'm twenty-eight now. Most twenty-eight-year-olds my age, like who I went to high school with and grew up with, like they are getting. They're all married. Never mind getting married. They are married, and now they're having babies. And like I'm over here driving monster trucks and just trying to like live it up and. Yeah, two different worlds, two different worlds. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, we got one. This one's aimed at both of us. Um, this is Blake from Iowa, and uh makes Not sense. Blake. Yeah, it makes sense because he's close to Minnesota, but he says, hey, man, he says, Jim and Amy thinking of vacationing um, at X Games in Minnesota this summer. He's like, nice. he's like, what? He's like, do you know if there's going to be any events that have engines? Um, I guess like motorsports events instead of just action sports. And he says, what do you guys think of a vacation? Um, I don't know. I think, dude, that's right up my alley. I'd love to vacation at X Games. Like, do it, man. Um, oh, heck yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Minnesota is beautiful in the summer. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I know every other American around the world thinks that Minnesota is that, like, deep, dark, black hole of America that's always cold. But it's not. Like, our 
you guys are right above Winnipeg, so I like to think Minnesota and Winnipeg are kind of the same thing. Yeah. But um, in the summer, it's so nice, and there's tons of motocross tracks and lakes, yeah. you know, land of a thousand lakes, and it's it's so nice there. Definitely. Go to Minnesota, and then yeah. drive up to Winnipeg and come hang out. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, X Games is going to be off the hook. I don't know about engine events. They haven't put out the full list of, uh, of events yet. I'm sure there'll be FMX uh, past that. I don't know. Um, but seriously, yeah, there's Mall of America. Um, there yeah. is, um, there's the new Minnesota twin stadium and whether you like baseball or not, that stadium is one of the best in the entire country. Like it's worth going to see, like there's so much, I would say, dude, if you're thinking about it, yeah, book your vacation, like stay a week. Don't just stay for two days at X games, like taking X games, but taking everything else Minnesota has. And like, no dude, seriously. Yeah. You are, you are on point yeah. Blake and Iowa. I like where your head's at buddy. Um, all right, so uh, this one, um, this is a gym question on Project Action. Uh, love the show. It's a good mix of action, sports, and racing. Um, are you going to get Rob Deerdeck on? <laughs> and, and, dude, this is like the crazy fan question I keep getting. I actually had this conversation with Podcast One. I said, I've got a lot of mutual friends with Rob, and I told them, I said, we got to get this guy on my show. So I've got my people on it. We're trying to reach out to Rob Deerdeck. I want him as an interview. Um, absolutely, he's at the top of my bucket list of interviews. Uh, we're working on it, man. He's uh, he's busier than Amy and I combined, I think. So uh, it's just one of those things getting him locked down. But that one, I'm trying, guys. I am trying. You weren't the first person to ask. You probably won't be the last until it happens. But uh, yeah. Um, so uh, this one is Josh in Minnesota. We're getting like these uh, Midwestern uh, questions. This one's directed at Amy. We kind of got into it at the last segment, but I left it on the list anyways. Amy, are you doing any moto racing this season since you're doing Monster Jam? Oh, my goodness. I am not kidding you. My social media accounts, like, people like, call me out, and they're like, you're not a moto stick anymore. You don't ride anymore. Like, you got it. It's winter where I'm from. <laughs> I cannot even pull my dirt bike out of my garage because the amount of snow that is there. So relax. I come from the Midwest. There's snow half of the year. So half of the year, I do other stuff. And this is like the same kind of cycle that happens every year. In the winter, all my social media people get on my butt about not riding their bike. It's winter. Relax. Get a timber yeah, sled. Absolutely. Like, I got to see what my schedule is like for Monster Jam. Obviously, it's going to be my first priority because it's super fun. Uh, and I get paid doing it. And I just ride dirt bikes for fun now. But I'm definitely going to ride. I'm definitely going to race. I'm going to try to do the Calgary Canadian National, but I'd like to kind of take my bike and I'd, I'd like to kind of go all over. Like I live in California, maybe I'll go ride in Florida, but I want to do a little bit more GNCC. We talked about it at the end of last year. I, you know, I did that very first enduro race and that yeah. was wicked awesome. So I'd like to kind of maybe switch gears and do a little less moto on the track and a little bit more enduro racing. Just again, I'm looking for the fun side of it and trying to have more fun on my dirt bike and I had a blast. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to ride a dirt bike. I'm going to be like 90 years old and still riding a dirt bike. For all those people out there, stop giving me a hard time about it. That's your that's your retirement gig, riding a dirt bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't uh, do it all, you guys. Like, it's so easy. Yeah. All right, so this one is uh, for me. Uh, this is Nick in Seattle. Um, what up, Nick? Um my pick for Formula Drift 2017, and it's funny you mentioned that because I was just looking at the thing, and I'm like, holy crap, we're only like a couple of weeks away from the Formula Drift kickoff. Like, we need to start getting Vaughn Gittin Jr., the, the professional fun haver on air, and Frederick Osbo. Like, we need to start dialing these guys in because it's almost drift time. Um, my pick mm -hmm. for Formula Drift 2017, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about going out to Long Beach uh, here uh, the 1st of April for the event. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I, I'll just have to see maybe doing some type of remote. I don't know. Maybe if you're in SoCal at that time, Amy will figure something out, but I don't know. I, this has all happened in my mind this morning in show prep. Um, but you were thinking the same thing. I am Nick, my pick, man, Osbo is on point. Forsberg's on point. Von Gittin's been on point. Like, I don't know. It's a crap shoot. Forsberg has been dominant the past two years. So is Osbo. Like, I don't know. This is tough to call. Like, I'm going to go out. My I don't want to say a dark horse pick, but I'm going to say this year is the year Von Gittin Jr. breaks back through and regains the crown. So, uh, yeah, I like him. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to roll with Von. And that's no disrespect to my friends Osbo and Forsberg and Turk and everybody else that has a chance to win. I don't know. You put me on the spot. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Von. I think yeah, I got a good feeling for Von this year. So 
There you go. Um, all right, this one kind of aimed at both of us. Um, Jim, you're not – this is just from Racing Fan 73. No name, no city. So, Racing Fan 73. Um, no Rally America this year. You're not doing Rally America Radio. Um, are you doing any remotes this season? If so, when? And are you and Amy doing them together? And um, I don't know. My remotes are kind of a gray area right now. Obviously, I did one at the Mint. Amy uh, Amy and I talked, and uh, obviously she was doing Monster Jam, so she couldn't be there. Uh, I think any remotes Amy can be at, she's going to be at. Um, we just uh, – uh, as far as which ones, no, I'm not doing Rally America. I probably will do a couple of rally events. I know I'm going to go to Mount Washington Hill Climb in July in New Hampshire. Um, I'll, be there with, I'll be there with Subaru, so that will be fun. Um, but past that, I know we've been talking about doing some GRC stuff. I've been talking about possibly doing something, the Indy 500. I've got an invite from impact to do something there. And this stuff I haven't even talked with Amy about because we haven't been able to get on the same page. Um, I don't know. Like I, I, I don't, there's a ton of stuff I've talked about maybe doing something at X games in July. Um, I think you and I have both talked to Amy. We want to do something at SEMA this year. Um, so I don't know, like uh, we're going to be doing some remote stuff. I think Amy and I just need to sit down and look at our calendars and figure out what the heck we're doing. Right. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. That's uh, and then it, it always seems to be ever changing too, but, um, I like the remote stuff. It's always fun. And it's always kind of like really a good chance for us to get wild and have some fun on the air. Cause you know, when we come together, it's a way different vibe than we're just sitting, you know, across the country on phones. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be doing some stuff. I don't know. Um, I know the next one I've got, I, I don't think Amy will be there. It's only a couple of weeks, but the UTV world championship, um, I I'll be doing a live show from there. Um, I'll be racing the star car, but, uh, I think Amy's still on tour at that point in time. So, uh, um, but yeah, it's, uh, that's the next one, but, uh, it passed that. I don't know. I know we got a ton of them cycled in and once Amy's monster jam winds up, and uh, and I've finally got that ra- the next star car race out of the way. We can look at the schedule and kind of get back to doing some radio stuff. But like I've always said, steering wheel trumps microphone. So anytime I can be behind the wheel, and I'm sure Amy's going to tell you the same thing. Like it's uh, oh, yeah. I- I'm gonna, I'm going to take the steering wheel over the microphone. So um, there you go. So uh, yeah, those are uh, I don't know some solid fan questions there, Hood. I don't know. You got anything you got to get off your chest in the next minute? No, I mean, I just really want to find out whether I'm going to be in world finals or not. It's killing me. It's like having Christmas presents and not being able to open them for weeks. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm just excited to find out. And then hopefully next Tuesday we'll know and we'll be able to have some fun on air before I, uh, you know, head out for Vegas. All right. Well, sounds good. Thanks a lot, Amy. we got to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. More after this. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high performance all wheel drive and rear wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425 888 7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlight. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my next guest to the line, Colby Rodriguez with Red Bull Global Rallycross. How's everything going, Colby? Good, Jim. How are you? And thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, man. It's been a long time coming. I know uh, you and I have known each other for, for quite a few years back to, I think you had me out at uh, Red Bull at uh, corporate there when you were with Red Bull. But uh, yep. transitioning over to Red Bull GRC, I know uh, last year, uh, you know, you and I chatted out there at Phoenix and uh, pretty stoked on, you know, the direction the series is headed. I know we've uh, been doing uh, a segment here on the show for, you know, a year now, I think, uh, you know, recapping the events and things like that. So it's been uh, been solid run. But, uh, you know, how's everything looking for 2017 and Red Bull GRC? No, things are looking great. I mean, you know, for example, we just announced uh, our, our Louisville venue this morning and tickets go on sale. And, you know, as uh, you guys have probably seen, you know, we have a, a Canada stop that uh, we'll announce all the details next week. So, you know, it, it's great, you know, that we have um, you know, obviously – you know, 45 days till, till our first event in Memphis, which is another new venue. So, you know, we're, we're all grinding right now, getting ready. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it, it's got to be kind of, you know, I know for me, like the, the Red Bull GRC, you know, like the calendar launch is always something kind of cool, you know, because GRC, it's always seems like every year it's a good mix of venues that have been there on the calendar and then new venues, you know. So it's always, you know, it's kind of like, oh, what, what city are they going to this year that we weren't expecting, you know. And so, like, to me, there's there's a bit of an excitement when you guys roll out the calendar every year just to kind of see, you know, w- where you're headed this next year, you know. Yeah, definitely. You know, this year we have – we have about a 50-50 mix of, say, ground-up build uh, events, you know, maybe similar to, you know, Los Angeles or, or Atlantic City where there's nothing. And then, you know, the, the other half are at um, actual racetracks where, you know, we, we actually fit really well. We're able to build proper rallycross courses, you know, in locations where, you know, they're really dying to have us up there and, and there's good fan bases. You know, being up in, in Seattle or Connecticut this year at, at tracks where I, I know there's – there's huge followings, not only for the rally community, but, I mean, heck, for one of your sponsors, uh, Subaru, too. So we're excited for those ones. And, and to start building tradition, right, when you say, you know, announcing new venues all the time, you know, at some point, you know, we, we hope to have some, some longevity at these locations. I mean, keep in mind, the series is only going into its seventh year. Um, and it's still an infant compared to, to many other of these uh, series out there. So what we're trying to accomplish in a short amount of time um, it, it, it's huge, right? And, and trying to compete with with some of these massive motorsports platforms out there. Yeah. Well, and how's it been for you guys? Because I mean, I, I've been with the series almost. I don't know. I've been following it since inception. I know I worked for a couple of years as you know an announcer and doing radio for the series, and then you know now we've got this content program. So I really follow it closely, and I've been out to. Uh, I mean, I don't know, countless venues, you know, and I've been to, you know, the purpose-built tracks, you know, that the GRC runs at, and then I've also been to the ground-up builds, as you put it, and to me, like that, you know, it, it's pretty remarkable because the thing about GRC is you can pretty much run anywhere that you want, 
But when you do, I mean, it's a ground up build and the infrastructure you put in, these are top notch racetracks and you know what I mean? And it's, you know, and to me, I mean, that, that's that gotta be a huge undertaking for you guys to be able to build these ground up, you know, you know, first class racetracks, you know, you know, set up in, you know, I guess in the shadows of, you know, of cities and things like that. Like it's pretty, pretty remarkable. Yeah. I mean, obviously when you have Red Bull, you know, as our title partner, you know, our events, you know, have to be premium motorsports events um, that, that look and feel how they execute. So when we take on some of these uh, locations where, where there's absolutely nothing, um, it is huge. And I, you mentioned, you know, we can pretty much go anywhere. You know, rally crosses have been a- around in Europe for 40 plus years, right? And here in the U.S., we, we actually don't have one purpose built track really that we go to. So um, the fact that we can run on tarmac and dirt in any condition, um, it actually makes it more challenging than you think because we can literally build a racetrack anywhere. So our options um, essentially become anywhere. And, and so we have to be really you know, strategic in, in where we go uh, location-wise you know, and to be able to build a, a track that, that really highlights uh, these vehicles and the style of racing. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, you know, obviously there, there's a massive draw too. I mean, you know, we'll talk about the demographics in a minute, but from race teams, I mean, uh, you know, obviously Andretti for the past couple seasons has been there and, and, you know, and they've been, you know, kind of the, the, the guy with the target on their back. Um, but, you know, you've had a, a lot of professional motorsports teams from other motorsports come in. I know uh, Ray Hall just announced that, uh, you know, they're throwing the hat in the ring this year. And I mean, you know, that, that's a massive get for, for Red Bull Global Rallycross to get names like Andretti and Ray Hall fielding teams in this series no it, hey it's huge for us right we have, we have such an eclectic group of of not only drivers but but teams that participate in the series um not only in the supercar class but but in the lights class i know you were talking to, to sarah earlier and you know that that's a whole other conversation on on how important the lights class is you know to the longevity of this the series and the sport and building grassroots efforts um but then when you talk about these these top tier teams um, you know, they're, they're all looking at it as, as a, a true viable option to, to have, you know, long-term success um, within the motorsports landscape. And, and the fact that we, you know, we have multiple manufacturers fully invested and, and we're, we're obviously talking to, to more that want to be a part of it, um, you know, that's what draws them in. And, and you mentioned earlier the, the demo that we provide and just the excitement, the, the style of racing itself. You know, we're, you know, these, these production-based vehicles going 600 horsepower, four-wheel drive. I mean, we're, we're a contact sport, right? So in, in these huge bursts of, of, of racing, you're, you're guaranteed to, to see not only great racing, but chaos and everything uh, mixed uh, with that, right? Yeah, well, and it, it's funny you mention that because I just did last week, I did the Adam Carolla show. And, yep. uh, and he knows kind of my rally background and immediately he wanted to talk about, it. he goes, my favorite motorsport is global rally cross. He's like, let's talk about that. And I'm like, all right, let's talk about it. But he, he goes, uh, you know, it, it, one, the cars are insanely fast, but two, like you, you had said, it, everything is action packed. And like he's, you know, and, and I think with the demographic we're talking about, it, you know, you guys have a one hour, you know, one and a half hour TV window, you know, and I think that's perfect. You pack a lot into that TV window. Um, it's not like you got to wait and sit a whole day at home to watch, you know, some 500 mile race play out. You know, you can sit. It's instant gratification. And like Adam Carolla said, he goes, Red Bull GRC is the, the closest thing to a real life video game you'll ever find. And I think I thought that summed up the series pretty, pretty good, man. No, for sure. I mean, you know, obviously you mentioned our TV, the fact that, you know, we're trying to find, you know, all the, the, the most powerful and positive things, you know, within the motorsports, and not only motorsports, but the event landscape. You know, it's important that we, we you know, we do operate as a, as a premium racing series, but we also want to be more than that. You know, it's, it's an entertainment property, you know, as we grow. We want it to be a festival atmosphere. You, you mentioned, you know, at events, I mean, you know, you combine with the supercar and lights class, you know, on, on one single day, we have, you know, probably like 16 different races when you include all the heats and the semifinals and the LCQ and the final, and all of them are, are, are full speed, you know, tons of contact, and, and these guys, you know, dying for laps um, because there's only a few, right? It's, you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting time in motorsports where, you know, it's, it's, you know, not trying to, you know, step on, you know, kind of the, the, the big giants out there, but, um, there, there's challenges um, yeah. to, to to keep that young demo, and what we provide is is that that short burst of excitement. And you know, I, everyone always talking about oh, the young kids, how they consume content. But you as well, you know, everyone have a, has a short attention span. So these five ten minutes of action, and then you give them another shiny thing over here, and then come back and watch yeah. more racing. Um, it's important to, to who we are. 
Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, anybody that's been to an event, I think that's one thing that GRC really does right. You know what I mean? It's, you know, they can watch a race and, and at some point in any motorsport, you know what I mean? It, it, there's got to be time to do track maintenance. So, but in that, you know, 10, 15 minutes of downtime, there's so much going on at a GRC paddock. I mean, they can go and they can, that's one thing that's amazing about GRC. People can actually walk right up to where the teams are working on the car and there's just a small barricade separating them, but they can actually see what's going on. They can meet the drivers. Like it, it's such a welcoming atmosphere for fans and, you know, and you don't get that with a lot of other motorsport. And I think that's what GRC I've always thought did does right is it, 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 that fan interaction and there's something for them to do if there is downtime on track there's a plenty for them to go and take in you know and and i think that's one thing the fan experience with grc is second to none that that open paddock atmosphere is, is so important for us um we, we really want to to allow the these fans to, to get up close and, and see the cars and feel the cars and, and watch what I mean, what some of these mechanics are able to do in 20, 30 minutes and, and replace entire engines and have them going after some of the, some of the, the, the wrecks and contacts that, that you see out there is amazing. But also to, to be able to, to touch um, and, and talk to our drivers is important. And what's great is, you know, our, our little ecosystem within the paddock, they, they all believe in this as well. And, you know, most of the drivers, you know, they, they always come up to, to us in the series and say, this is so great, you allow us to interact. Um, also to build our personalities and our brands, right? It's huge. We have, we have such a, a wide range of, you know, Scott Speed, our, our two-time champion, has come from, you know, all the way from, from Formula One to NASCAR to here, and he says, you know, this is the most fun he has in, in a race car in, in, in atmosphere. And, and then, you know, think of all the other guys, you know, your, your mid-400 teammate, yeah. you know, Tanner Faust, you know, where he comes from, and, and then Deegan from the motocross world. Everyone brings so many different experiences from so many different walks of life, and and in most cases, they say, you know, you, you guys are you're taking all the, the positives um, and, and adding it into the series, which is great to hear. Yeah, well, and I think that's what's so fun about GRC is the diverse lineup of drivers, like you said. I mean, you know, to me, you've... You take so many guys from action sports background and open wheel and road racing and off road and drifting and it's like they all converge, you know, and it's like um, and, and every track you see a driver that excels at a different type track because every track is different, you know, and it's not the same one mile oval, you know, time after time. So you never know who's going to, you know, jump up there and, and all of a sudden surprise you one weekend. It's like, oh, wow, where did he find that speed? Well, it was just a track that catered to him and they, they got the setup right. And uh, I think that's what's really fun about the series is there's a bit of an unknown going into every weekend where you know there is a chance anybody could you know take a podium well for sure i mean obviously you know you take all those opinions uh and, and try and build the best track you know clearly you know when you have brian deegan saying we need more dirt and you know, <laughs> scott wants you know more tarmac and whatever benefits them right yeah uh it's what we always hear and everyone uh, wants to say we need to make changes here but what is interesting you, you talk about this, this group of drivers and you know, we alluded to earlier the, the lights class and Sarah. What, what's what's neat is there's this young group of of really talented drivers that are starting to choose rally crosses as their their so-called profession to be a racer. You know, five ten years ago, everyone would be like, you know, I want to be a NASCAR champion or an F1 champion. And you're starting to hear these kids say, you know, I want to be a I want to be a GRC champion, and they're grooming themselves to to be rally cross racers and. And they're starting to make the appearance um, in the supercar class, which is exciting. I mean, you know, Cabot, who was our, our, our life champion last year, announced he's going to be with Herta. And, you know, you know Mitchell DeYoung, who, who obviously won the lights class, he just won, you know, the, the ice racing championship in Sweden. So to have some California kid go into the, the heart of, of rallycross and go there and win a, a championship on ice, which obviously he doesn't grow up around, is, yeah. is really good for us. And it, it's neat to see that these kids are developing into – to actually rally cross racers and not trying to apply their driving skills to rally cross. Yeah. So uh, what? What? Uh, obviously, we only got a minute or two left. But uh, 2017. Uh, you know, what? Uh, what kind of announcements can we expect the next couple of weeks? Uh, what are we? A uh, month and a half uh, out from uh, the season kickoff. Yeah, we're we're 45 days out. We've announced about half of our venues where the tickets have gone on sale. Um, we have another one Thursday next week. Everyone will hear about what Canada. Um, will be, which I'm really excited about. I mean, we, we both know that there's rabid fans uh, yeah. up in that area, and I expect that one um, to, to go off. But, you know, we, we still haven't heard our announcement from, from Honda's lineup, and, you know, the Honda Red Bull team lineup, and a few more teams. So um, as we get closer and closer on a weekly basis, we want to make sure that we, we, we keep awareness up and, and keep providing uh, new details uh, for all the fans, right? And then, like I said, Memphis being a new venue, um, we're, we're excited to kick it off there. 
Yeah, it's, uh, I, I Memphis. I saw that and I go, oh, man, what an awesome place to go and bring you know Red Bull GRC to. I think it's it's going to be a home run for everybody. Uh, definitely looking forward to that one. And I, I don't know, I'm just excited for the whole series this year. I feel like there's a lot of momentum pushing you know GRC's way, and uh, I think this is going to be a banner year for the series. No, I'm I'm excited. I think I think there's really big things to come. Uh, not only this year, but into 18 too. So. Yeah. Um, and before we get out of here, I do want to thank you, Jim, not only for the show, but all your projects and, and the platform you provide for all these series that don't normally get national recognition. You know, I, I've been around this community for, for quite some time, especially my years at Red Bull, and, and it's neat to, to see, you know, platforms like this grow and, and, and these communities uh, really growing. Yeah, well, you know, and I, I, you know, I think it's, you know, th- there's so many amazing, talented athletes and drivers and, and brands within these things, you know, w- within the series and the culture. And, um, you know, I think it was one of those things when I launched the show, everybody said, yeah, I can't be done. And I go, well, look, I said, if you combine everybody, I said, I think we've got such a, a big following that I said, I think it could work. And, you know, and, and it has. And I, I, I've just been fortunate to be able to work with some amazing people to help me grow this thing and, and give a voice to all these motorsports that, you know, aren't quote nascar you know and it's uh sure. it's been kind of cool to see you know the series like grc grow from uh very small the first year and three small rounds to uh you know this you know this massive series that everybody wants to be a part of so um i know that's great yeah. really great i mean hey we're we, we hope to continue growing and you know like i said uh, I, I expect this year to be be really good so let's uh, hopefully get you out to a few yeah absolutely man well I, i'm looking forward to getting out to a few of them for sure and uh yeah we'll uh, we'll definitely have to chat but uh um yeah thanks a lot colby i appreciate the time my friend and uh, we'll definitely have to do it uh, do it again around uh, around race time let's do it man thank you be good all right thanks a lot colby all right bye-bye. bye bye All right, that was Colby Rodriguez with Red Bull Global Rallycross. We're going to take a short break, wrap things up, we come back from the break. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount life is all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound
For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, wrapping things up on yet another edition of your favorite action motorsports radio show. Uh, awesome show today. Amy Hood and I, lots of time to catch up. Also had Joe Duncan from Terracross, Sarah Price uh, on the line, uh, talking Red Bull GRC lights testing and uh, her plans. And Colby Rodriguez getting to the bottom of what's happening with Red Bull GRC in 2017. Definitely solid, solid lineup. Don't forget to tune into Project Action every Thursday's dropping on Podcast One. Uh, got another show coming at you. Don't know who my guest is going to be this week. It'll be a nice surprise for you guys, but another solid one coming at you there on Project Action. Got to give a shout out to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Casey Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirtfish, Impact, Terracross, and the Blue Otter Resort and Casino. Give me a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on all forms of social media. Amy Hood is at Amy Hood 71. Don't forget to rate, review, to subscribe to Project Action. And, uh, you know, going up to Dirtfish Rally School, use that coupon code JBDirtfish for 15% off classes. Got uh, Supercross coming up, UTV World Championship. Got a little Rally America in the 100-acre wood. And, uh, man, we got a whole lot to... Whole lot of motorsports coming at you. We're starting to get into full swing of things. Got Formula Drift coming up. Red Bull Global Rallycross going to be one heck of a springtime. Looking forward to it. We'll be back next week here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. In the meantime, be safe. And as always, game on.